Hello, this is an additional recording for the coal mine cell stranded environment. Uh, we're just kind of be looking through every single asset. This is dirt layer info, snow layer info. I don't think it's going to be anything too crazy. Characters are just basically what you would expect. It's actually the Unreal 4 one, so that's actually kind of interesting. Meshes, secret medicum, rigs, textures. Let's just kick ourselves out of that so we can actually go to our own stuff. Fire. Uh, the fire we use for the coal mine itself is this one. We took out the smoke from it, but otherwise it is just a free fire that I had found. Pretty simple. So free assets still available. Has a lot of other stuff available. I have a lot of other stuff that I have been <coughs> working with. I'm sorry, I'm still sick, so... Might not be the best video, but uh <laughs> thought I might as well get it out here. Coal mine assets probably have the most things in them. So geometry, post processors, and textures. Let's just go ahead and do post processors first. That's we have a lot of instances. I won't really go into the instances though. Uh Breath of Wild Shader. <coughs> You will notice that certain things like the grab out of other stuff, like custom def buffer. <coughs> <coughs> Might not actually be grabbing for something, but uh, a lot of these will. <coughs> Breath of Wild Shader, just kind of just slowly go through. I'm not going to explain too much. You can kind of see from the circle over here what it's doing. Yeah, just a lot of information. This one is very commented out because the video I watched didn't really comment it much. So I commented as much as possible. Light Shadow Transition. Extract Life Buffer. That is the Breath of the Wild Shader, which is not one we use. That is not the one we use at all. Cell Shade is the one we used, which looks very similar, but it's very, very different. Push Watch and Sir. One of the important things to know. <coughs> God, I should not be doing this video. Anywho, back to the video. Just kind of scroll through depth compression, skybox color, just basically having non affected skybox, light buffer, and a bunch of math, which is really what goes into your. <coughs> God damn. Material instance. <coughs> what you really. Change the settings on it quite a lot. I made a couple different versions of the outline ones that went through different phases. One where it was just black and white, one was just non multicolored, but we never multicolored it anyway. So we'll just go into the outline processor. Once again, it's a very similar situation. You can see a lot more of what it's doing though over here. I think that also might not have not even been showing the cell shading one because then that one is. A specific, you have to click off and on, yes and no. So, this one has a lot of stuff, a lot of just jargon, a lot of math within it, a lot of stuff over here, too, which just continues more and more and more and more. <laughs> Overall, the post processors are a lot of coding. It took me about two hours to get through a half an hour of a video every single time. I only went through the first hour of the video that I watched for it because I only needed. The outline functionality, I didn't need any color functionality where you could then make specific outline certain colors. Go to the functions. Let's just go ahead and, and honestly open all of these. Or not. Okay. Uh, edge detection. I'll let it sit here for a second just so you can kind of see it, but overall nothing too important there. There's different edge detections for depth, different edge detections for normals. That's kind of just how the dealio works. A lot of these edge detection stuff are just for the outline post processor. I don't think I had any of these functions. For any of the other post processors, I did. Ooh, that's bright. But this is figuring out the grazing angle, which is basically the angle <coughs> uh, that would basically cause the black lines to appear more strongly. I don't really have a good example at the moment. 
but it would basically take that away so you don't have this giant black blob appearing. Uh, this is just the Git kernel, which I'm not entirely sure what that means for my own sake, but it is very important and you use this a lot by throwing it into a lot of other things. So it definitely has a lot of important uses. As you can see, some of these things are covered on vertical output, horizontal output, set size of pixel. I think it might be setting the size of how thick the outline is. Or it might just be a basis detection for outlines, and it's not outlines, which is for... Oh boy, yeah. So, uh, math. <coughs> <coughs> I probably should have just made this a silent video, in all honesty. Just so I can actually get through this without dying. I was just kind of interested to see how quickly I can get through everything. That we have. That's depth. Thickness modulation. This one is probably more actually what goes into. Uh, yeah, probably any of them really could be do with thickness, though not all I'm saying technically is the outline plus processor with the various uh, material instances. Now we can head over to geometry. There's a couple that are specifically in their own areas. Overall, though, it's fairly simple. Let me just. I want it to be big now! Bruh. There we are. This is a pretty easy way just to kind of go through all of them. Uh, additional wall, which we use in a couple different areas. Just to kind of block off sections and add a texture to it wherever it was needed. Apron was used to have a kill a cook thing on it. The book has a couple different textures that it can be used. So there's an inside of the book texture, a cover texture, and a paper texture. So to give it a little bit more uniqueness, kind of based off the Helsing and Berserk mangas I have, the Deluxe Editions, a giant cauldron, uh, the chamber floor as an actor. This one has all the fire and everything included within it. Oof, I pressed a button. Okay, chamber dome, chamber floor, the coal ring, the coal ring has an actor, which has all this ice and coal around it. Though we ended up just using the coal ring floor actor instead. We have a cord base, a cord end, and a cord lamp, all of which are in a different cord dynamic actor that is somewhere around here. This is the floor to roof filler, which is just used on any area where like going down a floor so it can fill from a flat surface to the arches of the hallways, a floor panel, the employee with a small hole as an actor, which basically is so I could create my own customized geometry, and it also is for entrances that have been a small of an entrance. And then the big hole one is just the opposite of that. Well, not opposite, but just a different version that has a bigger hole entrance, but the actor, once again, is there, so I can add different things to it. <coughs> Dynamic was where I started adding more things inside, started adding the beds, the tables, different things like that, which then was duplicated and put into specific rooms, and a bunch more variations were made. Dynamic hall segments. This hall segment is just so you can have the lamp attached to it, you can have the cord attached to it, and you can change out the various versions. Dynamic cord alone, though, is the better version of that, where it's just the cord dynamic functions and the lamp, so you can turn all those on and off, visible on and off, within the scene. Uh, just so you don't have to keep trying to bring in a different piece of geometry or replace with a different piece of geometry, which might be the easier way of doing it in some sense instead of the way we ended up doing it. I guess I already talked about dynamic big room, but... Same thing with as the dynamic small room, but just the bigger entrance again, but same setup really for the infrastructure inside, except for the more unified stuff that came with the various rooms. Door reactor just has its own unique planes kind of in there to give it some proper collision so you can walk through it. Door blocker. This is just a piece of geometry that can block a door. It's for one of the rooms. Death wall is an actor, which I will open this one up just so it can give a little bit of explanation because it has a little bit of code that actually goes well for it. If it'll load. Taking a second. Yeah. So... The thing itself, not very important, it is have this giant collision factor, 
So when you on begin overlap, cast the third person, delay for three seconds, uh, is overlapping actor with collision, which is just that one giant white block we saw. Goes to a branch. If that is true, then it'll open level name to coal mine two. Though that level has its own issues. So I was pretty smart about that when I was just doing those. I'm not sure what this covers for in all honesty. I think it's just something that came in. Globe Lamp was the first edition of something which did not work out well. Most of Lamp is a more inside part. And then uh, Lamp Core is combined with that to have light actually be able to emit from the inside because with the post-processor for cell shading, it does not like having any sort of metal or glowing. It just turns them pure black. So you have to be very careful, which is why I had to actually use the specific version of the cell shader instead of using the one that just cell shades everything but the sky because it would actually ruin certain objects. Hall segment, very same thing as like the hallway door segment. Oh, we might have already talked about this. But it has its own collisions, and that's basically the full use of it. And then just some geometry, 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 but they're used for different actors. Hallway segment with a door hole, and then hallway side. And this one's probably a full hall segment, which we did not really utilize because we wanted to be able to make things more unique and have easier way of changing the uh, geometry around, well, changing the collisions around. As you see in the hallway where we have different rooms, and it's kind of like room here, wall on the other side, wall on the other side going upward, and then they kind of just go zigzag with where the doors are. Uh, a couple of different hinge options. Hinge double-sided, hinge in a wall. Hinge single-sided, hinge double-sided was used for the sword holders that was in Shadow Master's room. Hinge in the wall was otherwise used. I don't know if I ever actually used hinge single-sided. Was again just kind of a useless texture. Oh, I see, because these are the cover, inner cover, and paper that were originally coming with the book, but we're just really important for no reason. We already talked about the core. It's basically just something that can be thrown inside of most of the lamp and otherwise be used. Uh, lesser Megadome is just a better version of Megadome, so it would be easier for geometry. This one I will also click into, just because it is quite fascinating. It does have quite a bit of code to it, but we will get to that in a second. So this is what it ends up looking like. If it'll let me rotate, okay, it's lagging. Maybe not. So when you press Alt, what are we doing? Buddy. Alright, maybe I'm just being stupid. How oh, bizarre. Okay, it's like locked me in position for some reason. Hello? I could rotate it around, but that's just gonna ruin so much stuff. I don't know what's going on. Anywho, that is that has all these different collision cylinders. Why am I not able to rotate around? It's so weird. Okay, I don't know what's going on with it, but we go to the event graph. All the different cylinders basically have the <coughs> the same function, where it's basically if you're overlapping that cylinder, it will have the megadome have no collisions. If you are no longer doing that, no longer colliding with it, it will have a delay of 0.5 seconds before turning the collisions back on. I'm interested why it was doing that. Huh. Maybe I broke this somehow. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. Why not let me like rotate things around? Ramp is pretty simple. Uh, pillar actor is just the pillar, but with some point lights added in. Once again, the scene doesn't like having light actually be there normally, so the way around that is to still have the uh, cell shading on the object, but you can just add point lights instead, and that can make the object glow as well. Photo frame was used for a couple of different things, just kind of replacing the photo for different uses. Paper model was used to have the uh, resignation letter on it for the Shadow Master's room. 
uh, Pan Circle and Pan Square, where pans that are in Skullbreaker's room, very simple objects. Name Slab, which is used, so I have a bunch of different textures that can go on there to change the name on it. Muffler was this kind of weird bear trap thing that I think personally looks really cool. I'll just go ahead and open it because, yeah, look at this. Look at this weird thing. I remember when I was watching Spooder Man while I was doing that, and they were in the uh, Indian world. So Hobie was there, and that was honestly pretty cool because I have pirated that for really no reason. Once again, I am trying to figure out why I'm locked, but uh, might just be a situation of me turning it on and off, and it just didn't work out well, who knows. And mountain, you can see it has a bunch of different textures going on it, because it's very complicated. Compared to a lot of other things, but Mountain Proxy 2, a bunch of different mountain things. Uh, the mountain actor itself is kind of interesting to look at, just because from the viewport you can see it has all these different planes going into it, and that's how the collisions work for it. Otherwise, it's just kind of the same as everything else. Most of Lamp we already talked about. The ring is a very simple thing. It builds up a ring box. Well, luckily, once I'm done with this, I basically don't have to be in an Unreal for quite a while, so. I know my right click's working, so I don't know why I can't rotate. So weird. Must have locked something somewhere. Slab, a uh, trifloor, and trifloor intersection. The trifloor thing is just so it can go in the middle of the trifloor intersection, kind of fill in that weird square space that's left behind. Otherwise, it's kind of just a combination of three different uh, pieces of hallway, and that's how the uh, trifloor intersection was geometrically made. Blizzard has a bunch of different stuff going on to it. Uh, basic two-sided was just a texture I made just to be able to utilize something. Uh, inner blizzard, middle blizzard, outer blizzard are just the static meshes which aren't loading. But I can try to load in the actors. And these just have a rotation movement on them of different value. Different values is what happens to be 25. Well, that's funny, it's loading in the book. <laughs> that's a thing. Uh, Blizzard Outer has a rotation movement of 30. And then Blizzard Inner has a rotation value of 35. So they're all different speeds, but they kind of just slow down as you go outward, apparently. It's very weird that they're showing different things now than they actually are. So if I click on this, it's certainly not that. Now there was more to see. There are specific rooms. Which basically these things. And then you also have. Some other wise geometry. That would go in here. And otherwise just some simple textures. Just because. I was trying to simplify my locations on things. It seems that. Stuff at this point just isn't loading. So that is unfortunate. But wrench textures in here has all the different values to it. So let me go back. Uh, this is different textures for the slab maker. It has three different textures going for it. Even though that's not very showing well. Wire curl different. You can kind of see what the things are. And if you've seen the previous video, they might make a lot more sense. Same with this. Otherwise, specific rooms have these just these different actors. That exists for them. What is this one? Is this what's causing issues? No, it's just WS. <sighs> but yeah. Bruh. Why can't I zoom in and zoom out, but nothing else? This is real weird. Yeah, that's Vulture's room. I'm not really going to bother going into the room. So honestly, I'm just kind of tired at this point. Because those things aren't working. We had different rooms. They were all kind of made to be their own geometry. So they could be easily swapped in. Uh, using the replace functions. Jigsaw's room. Uh, specific rooms. 
Baldur's Room has these different things in here as well as these various textures for the acid pool, bone throne, shelf textures, and voodoo doll textures. Otherwise, if we go back into textures, which we can kind of try to wrap ourselves up really quickly. Yeah, once again, we have a lot of material tech, instant textures, and just other textures. Unfortunately, things just happen not to be loading very well right now, and then you can kind of see there's a lot of different folders that exist for the various textures, uh, for the sky map even. Once again, just more instances, and it just doesn't feel right anymore since it's not actually like loading in things properly. So we're going to go ahead and end the video right here. I'm sorry things didn't work out very well towards the end, and especially towards the beginning when I was just dying. So, overall, I really enjoyed working on this project. I put a lot of time into it, approximately 85 hours, so it was a lot of fun.